Hi, my name is Stephen Hamm from Archery Supplies. This is the Max Manual Trophy. Now, I want to talk about archery in general. So I won this trophy last year. The trophy is presented, so you shoot a FITA 144 arrow event, and it's awarded to the recurve archer who shoots the highest score, which last year happened, we actually tied the score. There was a lady and myself who shot the same score, but I shot more X's. So anyway, so I shot the highest score equal to Christine um, for this event last year. I didn't get a medal or anything. This is a perpetual trophy, um, which I think is a bit average. Just saying it. Like to shoot, spend the whole day shooting a shoot, not to get a medal, not to get a trophy is just rubbish. So that's archery. You get used to it because that's the way it is, right? So anyway, I want to talk about this because what I find interesting about this is that it has all the archers who've shot this event over time. Going back to 1970, 1975. So in 1975, it was, won by, it was won by an archer by the name of Terry Riley. Now, Terry was an Olympian. So Terry shot in the Olympics for Australia for a number of years. And I checked in 1976, he came 24th in the world at the Olympics. And in 1976, for this event, Terry shot 1188 and 1195. Now, that would have got him 10th in the Olympics if he shot the same score here as he did in the Olympics. Now, in 1976, the Olympics was won by a person by the name of Daryl Pace. Daryl Pace almost shot a 1,300 men's feeter. So I'm going to put up a picture of his bow and his stuff because I want to compare it with today. Because I cannot stress enough that everyone worries about their equipment and not themselves. Today we shoot arrows that are really, really expensive. We used to shoot aluminium arrows back in 1976 that are just rubbish compared to the arrows we shoot today. The scores are not comparable. We shoot these spin wings which get the arrows spinning. We didn't shoot them in 1976. We shoot these amazing stabilizers that absorb all this shock and that are really thin and amazing. We shoot limbs which are made out of carbon are really fast. We shoot these risers that are incredible. Back in 1976 we had a cast riser, we had wood limbs. And if I remember correctly, and I, this, I probably got this wrong, Daryl Pace I think won the Canberra World Championships with twisted limbs. Now I want to put it into perspective. So 50 years on in technology we're talking about. String materials, so much different today to 1976. You can say, what's this got to do with Max Manual? It just outst it's just blows me away. I'm going to go through some of the names on here. Um, it just blows me away that the amount of technology, how it's improved, and it has, it's improved, today compared to back then. And overall... The Olympic scores have improved. So back 1976, 1300, now the men's recurve at the Olympics will be shooting much more than that. Okay? However, in Australia, at the last Nationals just done, there was no archer who shot 1300. Daryl Pace would have beaten all the archers in Australia with his cast riser, his aluminium arrows, his crappy string, his crappy stabilizers and his wooden limbs. He would have won. While everyone's shooting these $800 arrows, shooting expensive stuff and worrying about all their expensive stuff, he would have beaten you. Now, I wanna go through some of the names on here and the scores because what I find fascinating about this trophy here is the scores, because it puts the score next to the name. So Terry Riley won um, in 1975 with a 1227 and a 1230. Now that would have really quite ranked him right up there in the Olympics if he shot that. The following year he shot 1188, 1195. Um, there's a K Birch, 1100. Um, and John Davovich, now John owned the other archery shop which was in, in Adelaide. Um, 
Now he swapped from being a recurve archer to being a compound archer and was a very good compound archer. He shot a 1223 and a 1224. Now John, um, that pretty good scores like Olympic level and I don't think he represents, well I'm pretty sure he didn't represent Australia at the Olympics. Um, then Terry Riley 1188, 1230, great scores. Um, Terry Riley 1115, now dropped off a fair bit, could have been windy. Then 1981, Chris Blake. Chris Blake was an Olympian uh, for a number of years, um, held a lot of the state records, and he was big when I started archery. So, so 1981, he won this event with um, 1157 and 1199. So 1982, and I was definitely shooting then, um, 12.22, so you can see the scores are all like 12.20s-ish. And you've got to understand, like, Chris Blake was like an Olympian, so that was a really good score for Australia. And on the world stage, it would have got you in the, you know, top 20s, top 10s, top 12s, before the Koreans came on the scene and just kicked everyone's butt. Um, Chris Blake, again, 11.60. Kay Thomas, now... Kay Thomas was a female archer. Uh, she shot 11.65, which is amazing for her because I didn't think she was much of an archer. Um, I really didn't think she was much of an archer, so she really shot well then because I was shooting quite a bit in 1984 and I can remember her missing the target a lot. So I'm not, no disrespect to Kay because I think she represented Australia as well, but that was a very good score for her. Um, R. Peterson, 1204, 1985. Chris Blake, again, 1986, 1234, 1987, 1189. Then, 1988, and you're probably wanting to know why I'm going through all this. Simon Fairweather, Olympic gold medalist, um, world champion, 1199. And so, 1199, Simon, we've gone now over 10 years on. I think he wins the Nationals in 1988, but I think that was as a junior. Might have won it as a senior in 1988, 1199. 1989, Simon Fairweather, 12.54, big improvement. So 12.54, today at, at the Australian Nationals, you know, you're doing, you're not winning, but you're getting pretty close to winning with a 12.54. So kind of, Simon, Simon and myself are about the same age. So back then he would have been about 19. Um, and shot a 12.54, very good for a junior and obviously did very well as a junior on the world and Olympic stage. Um, an S. Jones, 12.27, S. Jones, 12.79. Don't know who an S. Jones is and I probably should because I was definitely shooting then. 12.79, huge score. Now this person here, Marion Reichman. Um, she's featured on this trophy, I think, 18 times. It's an amazing achievement. Um, 1219, 1207, fairly low score, 965. Not sure what happened that year. Then 1108. Now here, Terry Riley comes back. So, um, with 1120. So, like, his scores are down from his peak, but he's still done all right. Marion Reichman, 1230. Marion Reichman, 1194. Now, this person here, Melissa Jennison, she came from Sydney, so I'm not sure what she's doing on the South Australian Trophy, because I don't think she was ever residing in South Australia, but maybe it was open, I don't know, 1274. Now, in 1999, she would have been an Olympian. Um, so she was definitely in the Olympics. Um, Jade Beatty. Now Jade held 11.62. She held um, the Australian record for ladies recurve and was going to compete in the Olympics and her shoulder gave way literally a few weeks before the Olympics. Carol Ashley, 1,031. Um, then a whole bunch of Marion Reichmans. Um, you know, 12.06, 12.37. Now, I don't think, and no disrespect, you know, to Mary Ann, because I didn't do my research, I don't think she represented Australia, but she was definitely high up in the recurve women's 
in Australia, but I don't think she represented. You know, I'm probably going to get told wrong. But some not bad scores there. 1198. Very. That's a like back. I would think that would be a big score for ladies in Australia. Now Jordan Womax here. Young man, he was a junior back then. He actually won the Australian titles as a junior. 11.15, 11.57. And when I say as a junior, when he was a junior, he shot as a senior and actually won the Australian Championship. Um, Wendy Moylan, um, 11.75. Marianne comes back, 11.47. Chris DeMello, now he's been state champion for around eight years. And what's kind of fascinating about Chris, like he features here twice for a 12.21, um, he was clearly beaten by other archers because it's the archer with the highest score. So, you know, Mary Ann would, <coughs> would have shot a higher score than Chris, which is quite amazing. Uh, Chris Drown, um, 11.85, and then myself at 12.12. Um, very interesting trophy. So... I'm going to say if you run an archery society, um, I think history is important because for me this is kind of interesting. Like the scores haven't really changed in what, 50 years, 1970 to 2024, almost 50 years, and the scores are pretty similar. The score, you know, like if you can shoot a high 1200, you're probably going to win not get a trophy, I don't know if they had trophies before. I can't seem to win a trophy. Anyway, this is a perpetual trophy, um, but it just strikes me about the difference in, in scores between 50 years ago and today in the level of equipment. Now, it's not saying don't go and buy fancy equipment, because I really think there's an improvement in equipment, but I think it's minor. So when I change arrows between one brand and another and I try stuff, I'm trying to get one or two points because that's what I think it's worth to me. Uh, when I change limbs, I'm trying to get one or two points. It will always be worth more, in my view, to train more and to put more effort in. So if you thought, well, if I could run 100 metres or I could run a, a kilometre, do it. Because the fitter you are, the stronger you are, the more you train, the better off you're going to be. And I think with this, seeing the names here, it makes me think that the higher your competition is, the better you will shoot. And what I mean by that, if you've got someone pushing you, so if you've got someone training really hard, you're you're more likely to train hard. If you've got someone who says, I'm training every night for 60 arrows, so if you want to be as good as the other person training 60 arrows, you've got to shoot 70 arrows. Um, you've got someone watching their diet, watching what they eat. You need to watch what you eat. Do you know what I mean? Now, there has been archers before in Australia and world championship levels who are not as fit as other archers, but I'm sure, and I know, they train hard. So, and this is the thing. Now, whatever you do, it's about trying to improve yourself, trying to improve your scores by one or two points. It doesn't matter if you win the trophy. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you improve. Now, coming, coming off the heart surgery, and I'm going to talk about that, I can't draw back a bow. I can't draw back a bow. I can kind of lift my arms a bit, but I've gone from 3Ks an hour on the treadmill. Uh, tonight I did 5.3Ks an hour for 30 minutes. Um, I'm doing now incline and on that it's about improving um, I tried to draw back a bow tonight which I probably shouldn't have um, but it's about improving so I'm going to start on light light poundage shoot scores close distance and gradually 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 try and get back um, but the harder you work the more success you're gonna have um, but just, yeah, on the trophy, a um, lot of big names there. I mean, Mary Ann, look at that. Like, look at it. It's just to think that you could be the top archer in the state, you know, against boys, girls, kids, everyone, for 18 years. What an achievement. 
Um, anyway, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. So if you're thinking about, you know, running tournaments and stuff, I think stuff like this is cool. Um, they only give away this tournament. I'm going to say there's probably about 60 people a shot in it. And they only give away two, two things, compound and recurve. No trophy was given, no medal was given. You got a perpetual trophy with your hand back next year. I mean, I think it's average because you do have to pay to enter this tournament. Um, I mean, I was happy with the score. I mean, I could shoot better, but for me, I wasn't so much worried about 70 meters. Um, I have focused on closer distances. Um, and I shoot substantially better at closer distances because that's what I focus on. I don't consider myself good enough to shoot longer distances yet. So, and I've been shooting forever. So, anyway, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. I hope that's been useful. And that's the Max Manuel trophy. And you're going to say, who's Max Manuel? He was an archer in South Australia. I think he held various positions on the committee here. Um, I think he's passed now, but I'm not going to, he might be kicking him well, but I think he's passed. I'm trying to remember what someone told me, and there was a while ago someone told me about him. Um, but I think he was a state recorder for a number of years on the state, and they just kind of named a trophy after him. So, anyway, um, just remember, the more you shoot, the better you shoot. Thanks for watching. Bye.